Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and every variation in between. Welcome to the channel. I am Lothans, and we are going to be taking another look at Ostrov. Uh, my all time, currently, my all time favorite city building colony sim game that exists. Currently, I've played almost all of them, if not all of them, at this point, uh, that have been made in the past and currently. Uh, there are some really cool ones in development right now. This is probably my favorite um, by far. I, I shouldn't even say probably. This is my favorite by far. There's a lot of stuff going on on the roadmap still uh, by the developer of the game. And I want to talk a little bit about the game itself, a little bit of its history. Um, so let me pull this up here real quick. Okay. So basically, um, and, and the reason we're taking a look at this game, uh, every time that I record a few episodes of this um, is because there's been some big uh, development update. There's been some kind of big... Uh, big content increase with the game really I played this the other day just for my own amusement and I noticed that there were a lot of things that were in the game that simply were not there before that I didn't realize had been inserted into the game at this point so we're gonna revisit the game and now and take a look at those new things and how they operate what they look like how they work and just generally enjoy this wonderful game but I want to talk about the developer um, I'm going to read off of his website which is ostrivgame.com um, it says my name is Yeveni and it's spelled Y-E-V-H-E-N-I-Y probably not saying that correctly I am not Ukrainian but he is I'm probably mispronouncing this, and I will continue to mispronounce every name that, that is in the game. But that's okay, because, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, it says, My name is Yevini, and I came to this world to create the best city-building experience I can and some other stuff. I live in Kharkiv, Ukraine, and I have been developing Ostrov alone in my spare time since 2014. In 2018, I started gathering talented people around me to get the development on a higher level. You can talk to me by this email, and it's down here on the screen here. You have any at ostrovgame.com right now. The game currently costs $25 US. Uh, back when I got the game, I don't really remember how I became aware of its existence. Because it wasn't on Steam at the time. It wasn't anywhere. It was just uh, on his website, I guess. You could download it and, and pay him. It was $20, and I do not regret uh, a single nickel of that money going into his hands. This has been a great game. It's given me very much uh, enjoyment over the years. And uh, it's still in alpha. It's in uh, build alpha 4, patch 7, version 0.4.7.2. And we're going to jump into a new game. One of the features that came with Alpha 4 that I covered in a previous uh, couple episodes was the tree type. Uh, generally, it's pine trees everywhere, and they just kind of look weird. You can change it to spruce trees, which these these are the spruce trees, I guess. Um, and a couple new maps, Map 9 and Map 8, I think, were added. Uh, I've tried 9. I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, I usually would play on like uh, 4 or 6. Those are my two favorites. I'm going to try 8 because I've never tried that one yet. We're going to jump right in here. And, um, you know, I, I recorded a, a, a couple of a couple of hours of content previously. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the game runs silky smooth uh, to myself. Like, as I'm looking at this, I can just spin around here, no problem at all, blah, 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 blah. But when I was re-watching the recording, every time I would move the map at all, it would get really choppy, and it was dropping frames like crazy. So, 
I'm hoping that is not the case now. I lowered the bitrate down quite a bit. It's obviously an, an OBS setting, but uh, we're going to see. We're going to find out because I'm going to do this again. Start fresh and uh, and we're going to see what we can do here. So it looks like everything is available except for this place here, this little island, inaccessible. Big, giant body of water. Huge body of water over here. And... I like that. I think that's neat. I like this map. I think we're actually going to start over here. And you can see um, if if OBS is, is doing its job, it's, it's picking up this little red line right here. And hopefully it transitions from the recording to the outsource site, whether it be YouTube or whether it be controllernetwork.com, uh, which you should definitely check out. Uh, hopefully this little red line shows up, but I'll zoom in right here. Here it is. This is the edge of the map, so I can't build anything out here. This is where this is this is not allowed. Can't go here. I can go in here. So I think in this area is where we're gonna start. And we're gonna we're gonna just drop our little settlement right in here. And we're gonna start building out this way. Sort of around the forestry area. Uh, this is, looks like really flat land. Maybe I'm... Uh, yeah, it's really flat. So that's really good. Good for buildings and structures. And uh, housing and things like that. And we have a, a little bit of farmland available out here as well. The important... Let me take another look over here. There's not much space over here. Up this way. We can go here, but... We're at the edge of the map. I don't know if you can see it, but the red lines are right there. So this is this is the corner right here. <laughs> Not much room. Not much room. I think this is our nope. That's outside. That's, this is our best bet right here. I'm gonna drop it in. It's right there. We see. We'll unpause. We'll see that our 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 people are milling about. They're having a little bit of fun up here at the top left corner for a few things it's going to give us a little hint on what we should do a bit of forestry for wood production let's go ahead and get that done and one of the things i wanted to mention is uh in previous builds of this game the previous alphas three and three and previous um it would tell you you know do this do that do this if you followed the directions you were screwed okay <laughs> Because you have, uh, let's let's put this down and I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, you have a, a limited supply of nails. That's still the case, but they were a lot less before. And the reason that's important is uh, if you follow the directions of the game, we'll say, hey, build this, do this, and eventually it'll say, hey, you need to build nine houses before winter. Or your people are going to move out. Okay. So you do that. And then it says, well, hey, you're, you're low on nails. You need to build a smithy. Okay. Well, if you've already built your nine houses, you've built your forestry, you've built your thatchery for the roofs of the houses, 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 you didn't have enough nails to build anything else, including a smithy, which you need to make more nails. So the game was over. You were done and it was... That was it. <laughs> you had to restart and just try to figure out what the hell just happened because you're like, wait, what? What? You know, I don't know. So at this point, you have enough nails to build all nine houses and a smithy afterwards. So we'll do that. But, you know, that was always a fun little little thing because you'd see that crop up all the time. And people are freaking out. What the hell's going on? <laughs> um. But anyway, we want the thatchery down by the water. We're gonna, we're gonna dump it down here somewhere. And then we can start working on our houses. A couple of things to mention about the housing. Right off the bat, the, the village house here was the original house you had in the game. Village house with garden is new. And it is the only version of the house that I'm going to use with this build because for a very simple reason, I've noticed uh, from playing the game just by myself, just having fun with it, 
that the village house, the original, without a garden, they struggle financially extremely badly. Like they have a lot of trouble making money. Especially once you get your, your town center set up and you start to mess with the, the tax rates and the, and the economic uh, options. Uh, everybody gets a basic monthly income. Then they, have, they get paid for work that they do. And the village houses with a garden, as you'll see as we go along here, they can sell what they grow, the excess, to the village be a, a granary with somebody working in there and they can they, so they can sell their excess to the town that gives them a supreme advantage over everybody else that doesn't have a garden because they're getting money from their produce and they're buying whatever they want the village house without a garden they just have to buy everything they don't have any money coming in other than their regular job so I've noticed that every time that I play this game and I build a regular village house, this guy right here, they have lots of problems. Keeping money, keeping the, you know, being able to buy what they need to survive, not let alone thrive. So that's uh, that's something that I, that I definitely want to touch on here. And um, and just make sure that we're, that we're not screwing anybody. And, and so we're just going to use the, the one type of house. So unless you guys are just, you know, sociopaths and you, you, you want to see our little villagers suffer and, and, and starve and die. I mean, you, I guess you could do that. You know, let me know in the comments if you, if you want people to suffer and die. But, uh, I certainly do not. <laughs> I want my villagers to thrive, in fact. And, uh, and the snapping is so good. Look at this. You can just snap it right to there. Rotate it around a little bit. I'm holding shift to place multiple buildings. You can see the options down here. Kind of... Snapping. gonna be eight we need nine I'm gonna do two more and uh, and you'll see why here in a moment I think I have to wait till some of these tents are gone so we'll just do a couple more along the coast basically just do one extra because as soon as we can so we have enough you know food on the market water available jobs available which we're gonna have plenty of jobs available uh, I want somebody to move in like immediately so let's, uh, let's get some water going in here we'll get a well right there and on the other side perhaps uh, another one. I we want those before the last house. And we also are going to run out of nails eventually, so we do want to get a smithy in. Uh, I think I'm going to put that out here by the um, by the forestry building. And we'll leave a walk space, and we'll also put that in front of the houses as well. And for that, we're going to need a couple charcoal piles. Uh, I like putting those in the back. Just uh, keep them out of the way, I guess. That'll just keep us full of charcoal. And we're also going to need a clay pit. Put that out of here, too. Just kind of out of the way. That to front. And so our forestry building is coming up. And one of the things that I love about this game is watching the buildings get constructed because they put every little piece in, which is amazing. You'll see the constructors bring materials over to the job site. Once they get that done, they'll start to, to hammer stuff together. Uh, and it's just going to be great. 
Uh, so we'll get a we'll get a we'll get a, a couple dudes in here. There's our clay pit. Looks like they're digging that out. Wonderful. So now we'll work on the thatchery, which we need for the roofing of the housing. Work on the houses, get the smithy done, get some more water sources, and get our last house built. And then we'll start thinking about food sources that we are going to definitely need. One thing that is brand new that wasn't there last time I played uh, on film was education. This was blank, much like much like the health is blank, this was blank. But we now have a primary school. It takes a lot of wood, a lot of clay, and a lot of nails. We're going to build that early. Build that early. And we're going to make that sort of the focal point of our, of our town here. Education system here. And we're going to put that right there. The reason I want to do that is I don't know if it matters yet in the game, but it, it you know your your citizenry are generally uneducated. I mean he has one out of five education. He has like, you know, some primary school. He has no education. Uh, his wife has no education. This guy has no education, his wife one education says so she's she's smarter than he is. <laughs> Don't tell him that. All right, we need uh, somebody in the thatchery. Now, in the higher options, one of the most important management parts of this game is figuring out who's going to work where, what type of person you want. The reason is there are very, very limited jobs that the women can do in the community. Now, that's just a product of the time, so don't get all feminist on me here. Uh, that is a product of the times. This game is based off of 18th century Ukraine, where they went out and settled all over the place and had these little villages crop up. That's how it was. And what this kind of reminds me of is like the Amish community now, where the women kind of do the housework, the basic chores. They do a little bit of the farming. Um, they do help out in a lot of different ways, but their jobs are very specific. And it's, it's based around their religion where uh, a woman's place is a woman's place. And, you know, that's just the way that they, that they live and that's what they believe. This game is no different. So when there is an option, hire both men and women, deselect men, and only allow women to work there. Because, again, there's limited places that they can work. And wherever they can work, I want them to work there. Because... That's only going to help us in the long run to keep more opportunities and more availability of the, the men folk, if you will, for the jobs that only they can do. So it's, it's, it is what it is, you know, and with a modern lens, we can say, well, that's not right. And you'd be correct, but it is the way it is back in the 18th century, 1700s. So we have to work with, with the, within the game's mechanics. So that's why I'm doing that. That's why. I, so, for example, the forestry can only have men. No option for women. Uh, this can have both. So we want we want her to work there. We don't want to we don't want to quote unquote waste uh, one of the men on a thatchery building when a woman could do the job just as fine and not take up uh, a slot for a dude. The more I the more I talk about this, the more I feel like I'm just digging, you know. So I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna move on and take a look at this beautiful house. Um, uh, and and you see that that you have no control over what they plant. They're gonna decide what they want to grow in their in their private garden. Uh, these guys have raspberry bushes all over the place, and then something else is gonna be growing here. And it's they planted that themselves. They decided, uh, based on whatever the game algorithm is, that that's what they wanted to have in their home, in their home garden. 
So very nice. Get our charcoal burning here, or creating our wood burning into charcoal. So a couple of things we want to think about. And and, and matter of fact, I'm gonna pause the school building because I really don't we don't need that immediately. Not one of the necessities of life. Uh, we want to focus on necessity of life, which is one of the things that is necess necessary to be alive is food and water. So we have we have water access coming with our two wells we're building. But we need a fishing dock. And to get the fishing dock to work, we need uh, fishing boats, which is built at the boatyard. So these two things work in tandem. Uh, that happens with a lot of different things. Uh, but before we do that, we need a, uh, a carpentry building, which I usually forget about. Not going to forget about it this time. We're going to drop it over here by the smithy. And we're going to bring that up to the wells and right after the smithy. Because at that point, our carts, wherever they are, right here, they take wear and tear. This little black line here is their, their damage that they've taken from just being used. So, ooh, and these guys, see the houses are different as well, which is awesome. We'll watch the next one get built, we'll see, but uh, slow it down. But you see this house is actually, they've, they've got a bunch of beehives back here, so they're going to be producing honey and uh, whatever else they've decided to plant back here. So these guys have stuff growing already in their extra garden. Got this house built. Let's watch these guys, and that is a big chunk of wood. He just he just hefted up. <laughs> Here you go. We have some uh, some people. I think like five people doing construction. So two of them are working right now. Three are on break, or maybe bringing resources over. I think I see this guy way off in the distance, digging clay. This guy's bringing some more wood, so that's good. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna sit here and just watch this house get built because this is absolutely one of the most amazing things about this game. One of the reasons why I fell in love with Ostrov is the level of detail that goes into just build even just building a house. And you'll see later on in the game that some of the newer structures are so detailed and so complex that it takes them a while to build it all which is awesome they should um, but the houses have even been altered in, in how they're put together you know the the foundation that they're building right now wasn't wasn't a thing before they just put like four things of clay put some wood down for the floor and that was it now they actually build a wooden foundation, support pillar, support beams. Then they put their they put everything down and they start to build the house up around it. So it's already, you know, taking strides in what I would say is the right direction. Like these guys are gonna have a little platform for their uh, for their stairs. Yeah, these guys have a little half porch here, three quarters porch. We hang. These guys don't have a porch, but you know, maybe they don't want one. Fine. I'm sure that at this point, you know, the people that are going to live in the house were probably being uh, involved in the construction process. You know, hey, what do you want? You know, what type of stuff do you like? And what sort of uh, layout do you prefer? And this and that. Or maybe they just built whatever and you just moved in. But <laughs> I, I assume. Uh, people being people, you know, they wanted to have a little input in their future home. So I would assume that whoever's going to move into this is intimately involved in the construction process. Perhaps even being part of, you know, in, in real life would be doing the constructing work as well. Like the, the head of the household, the, the, the husband would be, um, would be helping to build the house himself, perhaps. So while they're bringing more materials, let's speed this along here. 
when the ashes start building it we'll we'll slow it back down to watch them and uh, actually I'm just gonna pause it now <laughs> save it stop the recording check out what I've recorded so far if it's really choppy I'm just gonna throw it away and uh, and we'll see what happens so uh, give me a second all right we're back and uh, I did check it out the recording looked much better um, but it was still a little bit choppy so apologies for that uh, I'm just I'm gonna leave it because it's not that bad but I lowered it down a little bit more the bit rate it's from uh, it <laughs> I went from 8,000 to 3,500 originally for the first part of this up until now I've I've loaded down to 3,000 we'll see what that does uh, I'm keeping an eye on the skip frames due to encoding lag that was what the problem was so right now it, it was like at two point something percent it was like 11 percent originally so I knew something was wrong but I didn't know how wrong it was so I watched the, the recording but now uh, now it's a, it was like a 2% for the first part up until now. Now it's at 0%. So in theory, I can do this woo, and no problem in theory. It might be a little bit choppy, but hopefully it's not very noticeable now. So it should be running smooth. I'm just going to let it go. Oh, it, it <laughs> <laughs> I think when I did my little twirly twirly thing, it went up to 1%. So, maybe I, I change it again. Maybe I change it. This is like, you know, uh, during a recording session, altering the setting. I think, I think I will. I think I'll bring it down to 2,500. That's as far down as I'm going to go. Um, not comfortable with less than that, I don't think. We're going to do that. All right. Take four. And uh, you didn't see take three because when I did my little twirly twirl thing at 2,500 bit rate, it jumped up to like 9%. 9% script frames. And so it's, it's going to be a little bit herky jerky here and there when I start moving stuff, moving around the map like this. There doesn't seem to be much I can do about that right now, unless because I don't know enough about OBS. I've probably forgotten more than I know now about it. But as long as it's not like eight, nine percent, like it was on my third try at twenty five hundred, I moved it back up to three thousand. That seems to be like a happy medium where it's not horrific <laughs> when it happens when I move around, and we're going to be moving around the map a lot, looking around, twirling around doing this and that so uh, really need that to be as low as possible as far as the the choppiness um, but honestly it's it's not choppy at all to me so uh, like I said that if you if you want to spend the money on the game I'm sure it's gonna be just fine for you it's just an OBS problem on my end it's it's you know so it's not the game it's it's OBS it's it's a setting in there that I have off I need to tweak it somehow I don't know exactly what I need to tweak so that's my problem right now once I figure that out I will uh, it'll be running smooth as silk just like I'm looking at it when I play so just keep that in mind. It's going to look a little bit weird when we move around the map and do our little twirly twirls. Uh, but that's not a, a perfect representation of what I see when I play the game. It's smooth as silk. No problems whatsoever. Never had any problems out of this game as far as performance goes, ever. Uh, not even when I got it to like 250, 300 population in previous alpha builds. So... We're going to go with what we have now. And we're just going to have to, we're going to have to live with it. And, uh, and, and when I say we, I mainly mean you because you have to experience it and I don't. So <laughs> there you go. So let's check out our house here. 
and uh, and you see this house has its own little room over here. It's wooden. Has a little step up here, a little little uh, what do you call this? What is this called right here? This little little elevated section you walk into the door with. I don't know. Whatever that is, they have that. Um, they don't have a cool little porch like these guys have. But, uh, you know, it's whatever. So once this house is built, we're done checking out like the start to finish house. Start to think about what else we need in our community. Because we definitely need the... We definitely need a food source. Which is going to be our fishery, and our, and we're going to need the uh, the boat uh, building place, the boat yard. Build our fishing boats for us. Uh, we're also going to need a marketplace, and I think we're going to get a little bit, a uh, little bit creative, or have a little bit of fun with the marketplace area. I usually try to keep them simple, but now. There's, there's more crops for the farmland and there's all these little garden crops that people can grow and you can, you know, like I said, they can sell their, their surplus to the village and those can be put on the marketplace as well. So we need a lot of market stalls now compared to what it was before, uh, before the village, uh, before the, the house gardens were even a thing. And again, we also have uh, more crops for the fields. We'll get into that. We'll get into farming a little bit later. It's very complex, which I love. Uh, but I, I did kind of figure out a nice little baseline because uh, you have to do crop rotations or your soil uh, runs out of nutrients, which is really cool. So I have my, my preferred uh, opening farmland method. And you'll see that come into play here. Um, I think not not next year, but the year after that. We're, we're going to focus on fish next year. Keep our people alive and happy and fed. And then we will have, of course, we're going to have our garden produce on the market as well. So that's going to be great. We might not even need a farm you know, if we're not going to have uh, animals right away. But I think it would be good because, you know, potatoes are, you know, a staple in, uh, in, in most societies nowadays. Um, definitely would have been a major staple for the people of this time period in the 1700s. Potatoes would have been probably the predominant food source, food crop, uh, other than perhaps maize or, uh, or lentils, those types of things. And, um... I think that's okay. So I, th I think we should definitely work on the farm anyway, just to kind of get it up and running. Give people something to do as well in their off time, because we will have downtime um, for certain jobs. And uh, <clears throat> and the farmland is going to be important once we get, uh, get you know, animals in the village, start to raise... Um, raise cows and pigs and chickens and as I found out when I played the other day sheep which were not in the game last time I played orchards were not there as well um, the smeltery was not there the uh, fulling mill which takes uh, wool and turns it into broadcloth uh, for the uh, for the for the weaver uh, the salt works was not there before as well. Uh, I already mentioned the, uh, the primary school was not there. We still don't have any health things. Um, we have a full, full fledged church now, which was in alpha three. So that's not brand spanking new, but it is neat. We have a construction office, which was not there before, which allows you to hire additional, hire additional builders. We won't need that for a very long time. Just, I know that from experience, and uh, and the tavern, which requires, I know from playing the game, uh, a 200 or more population. So that's way down the line as well. So 
really cool stuff in the works here. We're watching our house get finished up. They're working on the roof now. Let's take a look inside while we still can, while there's no roof. Really cool. So you see like the fireplace slash wood stove, chimney. You got a little, uh, perhaps their bedrooms. And, uh, and, and the family would share one room in this time period as well. One bedroom would have pretty much everybody in it. Um, you know, the, the parents and the children would all sleep in the same room, perhaps even in the same bed together. And, uh, and, and at the very least, all the children would have their own bed and, all, and the parents would sleep in their own bed. That would probably be uh, the lap of luxury for this time period if you had something like that, that type of setup. But this, uh, it's, it's really, like, look at how detailed this is. Just amazing detail. For just one little, one little single family home. I mean, and, and they're, they're finishing it off right now. Loving every minute of this. Um, again, in my opinion, the best city builder colony sim, whatever you want to call it, game currently available. And it's likely to be that for some time. I mean, I'm sure that at some point there's going to be mods that are going to be uh, possible. Uh, but it's it's in early development. So, you know, obviously the, the developer's not interested in, in the community creating mods yet. There's no availability for that. So... That's something that I would expect to see later on down the line, years from now, when the, the game is fully released and people want more and they're like, you know what, I think it would be cool to have this or that or the other. It's like we need three more thatches put on and they're leaving. No! <laughs> we'll, we'll speed up time here and, and until someone comes to finish this off and we'll watch it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. One, two more things. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. So they're going to have, looks like, what is that? Mailbox or something? <laughs> uh, looks like they're going to have raspberries as well. These guys have lots of raspberries. They don't have any in yet. These guys probably have some honey already. Nope, not yet. Uh, so... Let's think about the fishery, the fishing dock, and the boatyard, because that's going to be our food source for pretty much all of next year. Um, so, very important there. Get the boatyard up first. Drop that guy in over here. Fishing dock will put it closer to the housing. Oh, I wish I could put it right there where they could just come out and do that. We'll put it uh, right here. So these people will smell fish all day long. It'll be great. Gutted fish, fish guts everywhere. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to love it. I'm sure they're going to love it. See how our wood this situation is going and plenty of firewood plenty of regular wood plenty of logs coming in that's working perfectly uh, we got our charcoal already our smithy is going to be going in after the housing is done after the nine houses are done and the reason i'm not working on the i'm not worried about the uh, the fishery and the boatyard right away is the people came with food like they have a lot of food they have food for basically this whole year and then some um so and by the time the houses are done it's pretty much going to be winter time so they're not going to be able to fish even if we had the fishing dock ready to go so there's just too much to do early on in the game too much that has to happen right away or the game's over <laughs> essentially for us to worry about the fishing dock and the boat yard right now. That'll be next year. That'll, they'll get built over the winter time. Usually that happens just fine. Unless I've messed something up here. And 
And yeah, that'll be fine. And, and we're actually going to move this house after those because until the until we get fish in in the marketplace, nobody's going to move in because there's not enough food on the market. We want to get a granary as well because, as you will see, granary is the only way for us to purchase those garden crops that are so important from from our citizenry so we have to have a granary to purchase the 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 uh, surplus produce from the individual families and so that we can put them on the marketplace a very important uh, chain of production there. So the granary used to be the granary was only really good for uh, storing the crops from the farms, but uh, now uh, and milk and things like that from the uh, cows. Now much more important for the overall health of the village and the survivability survivability of the village because these two these two families are going to have honey these two families are not unless it's on the market where they can buy it they don't they don't just give them honey they're like hey no my honey mine can't have any unless they want to buy it from me and then <laughs> anyway uh you get the idea so we're going to want a, a town hall here rather soon as well and I think we're gonna put the town hall uh, I kind of want to put it over here what is this that's our school yeah so that'll be fine right next to the school right about put a little walk space there right about there and the reason we want the town hall up sooner rather than later is that allows us to, to play with the tax rates and the land taxes and the uh, the buy and sell rates for the produce on the market and things like that. So that'll help us to not uh, hemorrhage money, which we're doing right now. So right now we're just losing money hand over fist. You guys have bees as well? Jeez. We're going to have so much honey, it's going to be ridiculous. We're going to have to export honey. Might be good. There's no way we're gonna use this much honey in our in our village. There's no way. Uh, but I also want to think about where our market's gonna be set up and how it's gonna be set up. And I think it's gonna be right in front of the town hall here, right right in this area right here. So we're gonna start to mess with that a little bit. And, uh, and you see, as you get close, you can see the outlines of buildings. That helps a lot. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. This is episode one of a series that we're going to create here of Ostrov Alpha 4. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, if you're interested in the game, definitely check it out at ostrovgame.com. Leave a like if you like the video. That kind of lets me know if people are interested in watching more of this. And uh, be sure to, uh, to check out episode two that will be forthcoming where we continue our marketplace build and uh, our village in general. We'll see you next time.